George Floyd, an innocent black man killed yet again by the police. We can't stay quiet anymore and we need to speak up. I just also want to mention that the videos and images surfacing online, we need to understand that this can be very traumatizing to some people. It's been traumatizing to myself, especially to the black community. Community They're seeing their own people being brutally killed in broad daylight on the street. So just be mindful of that. We need to take care of each other and each other's mental well-being. So if you're gonna share these graphic images and videos, please disclaim that before you do so. I want to say their names. Breonna Taylor was shot eight times in her own home because the police raided the wrong address. Ahmad Arbery was killed just for jogging. Eric Garner called out I can't breathe 11 times before the police killed him just for selling cigarettes. Philando Castille killed for just having a broken tail light on his car. Tamir Rice, a 12 year old boy, killed just for carrying a toy gun. Now these are just a handful of names that I've mentioned and this, this racism has just gone on for too long. Racism is deeply embedded and is a feature of the social, economic and political systems in which we all exist in. I just wanna give an example of redlining. Redlining is actually now illegal, but it was a practice placed by the government to restrict certain services, whether that was insurances, access to mortgages, um, certain funding in those areas, access to good education. That practice restricted those services to residents based on race and ethnicity. The term redlining actually came about when loan corporation would use red marks to outline mixed race and African-American neighborhoods. So because of this rooted racism, the black community and ethnic minorities were denied access to these services. They were set to fail from the beginning and wasn't given the same opportunities as the white man. I also want to mention that black men who commit the same crimes as white men receive federal prison sentences that are on average nearly 20% longer, according to a new report on sentencing disparities from the United States Sentencing Commission. Now, I don't want to hear that this is not Britain's issue, that this is not France's issue. This, this racism is everywhere. I want to say these names. Roshan Charles, Sarah Reed, Edir, Frederico da Costa, Jimmy Mubenga, Sheku Bayo. All lives taken here in Britain. In 2017, the Lamy Review showed that while black people comprise 3% of the overall population in England and Wales, they currently make up 12% of its prison population. That means we're locking more of our black people in prisons compared to the US. So yes, there is an issue here in Britain. Protests should be happening here in Britain and we need to address these issues. Some other stats that I think it's really important to mention so that you guys can understand how bad this is. In the year 2013 and 2014, 59% of people stopped under section 60 stop and search powers, which should by the way be random, by London's Metropolitan Police Service were either Black British or Asian British. Black people specifically are 4.2 times as likely as white people to be stopped and searched by the police. Now, black offenders were 44% more likely than white offenders to be given a prison sentence, 38% more likely for public order offenses or possession of a pe weapon, and 27% more likely for possession of drugs. I don't wanna just sit here and read a bunch of stats to you. It's all out there for you to read. But these are ones that really stood out to me and I thought I needed to mention because it shows how racism is still ongoing to this day. I do wanna talk about Beli Majinga who was a railway worker and who was assaulted when someone spat in her face and before doing so stated that they were COVID-19 positive. She then contracted the virus and died three days later. However, the man who spat in her face is still walking free. Why was she not provided PPE while she was working? So I urge you guys to send an email to the Mayor of London. I will leave a link to a template that you guys can use. It's fully written out for you and all you have to do is write your name and the borough that you are from and this all the contacts are already included in email and this is a way that you can help to get justice for Belly. There are also petitions that you can sign for her as well so I do urge you guys to do this and I will leave links in the info box. And like I said, the racism is embedded everywhere. The criminal justice system is not the only issue. We also should address the discrimination in employment. A study by experts based at the Centre for Social Investigation at Nuffield College, University of Oxford, found applicants from minority ethnic backgrounds had to send 80% more applications to get a positive response from an 
employer than a white person of British origin. The figures were even higher for those of Nigerian, Middle Eastern and North African origin at 80% and 90% respectively. 90%. To me, that means they have to do double the work in order to get the same job and a white person is applying for. That is insane. I've always been someone that says that I don't know too much about the topic, so I, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it or voicing out what I think about it and all of that, especially online. But I don't think there's room to do that anymore. The past week I've carried such a heavy heart and I've done everything I can to read as much as I can to understand Although I will never understand their pain because if I were to go outside, I'm not in fear of getting stopped by the police. I'm not in fear for my life. I'm not in fear when I go into a shop. I'm not scared to walk out the shop empty handed. These are just little things that we don't notice. We need to acknowledge our privilege. So here are my demographics. There is a big issue within the South Asian community and also other communities as well, but I will address specifically the South Asian community because they form the majority of my viewer demographic. The problem is within our own homes. If you were to bring a black person into an Indian household or South Asian household, that is of the unspeakable. The racism, the prejudice, the judgment is disgusting to this point. Now I'm married to a black man and that came with a lot of judgment. I've had to cut members of my family out of my life. You guys know this and I know this, it is not happily welcome to bring a black person in your home, especially to be with them as a partner. But why? What is the reason? Most of the South Asian community is so full of the model minority myth that we think that our race is more intelligent or superior than other races. Now I've seen that firsthand and I know this happens, so don't pretend that it doesn't. We need to start conversations with our families and talk about these issues. No more comments about being Kala. No more bringing down a person because they're darker than other Indians. Why do we not like to tan? What is the reason? These are issues that we need to address every day. And the excuses that we bring up to say, oh, it's their elders, it's their generation, it's their way of thinking, that's no longer an excuse. So yeah, starting conversations with your loved ones, especially in a South Asian household, will be hard, but it must be done. And if you're struggling because you're with a black person, stand your ground, because if your family truly loves you, they will learn to accept, like they have done with me. It all comes with communication and you need to start them now. I also want to address the Mauritian community. As an Indian Mauritian, I know very well of the racism that we have against black Creoles and the presence of police brutality of the Mauritian police force against them. This became more apparent when a Sege artist called Kea was arrested just for carrying marijuana and died three days later whilst in police custody. This created a massive riot at the time and is an example of police brutality in yet a multicultural, multi-diverse, multi-religion country. Now the police is not only the issue, we need to recognise the implicit bias Indu Mauritians have towards the black Creole community. So I urge the Indu Mauritian community to start conversations with your families and eradicate this way of thinking about black Creole Mauritians. Start loving one another and be more welcoming towards the black community. Now I really want to address how you guys can make a change. Donate if you can and if you have the means. And if you don't have the means to donate, I will be donating 100% of the AdSense revenue from this video to support the Black Lives Matter movement. I will be providing receipts on my Instagram so do make sure to follow me on there. So if you can, please watch this video throughout all the ads so that we can raise as much money as we can. You can also sign as many petitions as you can. This only takes a few seconds. Once you register, you can sign as many petitions as you can. It's the quickest thing to do and makes all the difference. So again, I will link some petitions that you can sign in the info box. It's really important to educate yourselves. And like I said, I was really scared to talk about these topics because I felt like I didn't know enough. And I really spent the past week just reading and reading, reading people's stories, looking at the statistics that prove that racism is still embedded in everything that we live in. Watch movies and documentaries, Get Out, The Hate You Give, 12 Years a Slave, When They See Us. There are so many out there and I'll try and leave a list in the info box. There are also books you can read yourself that I will link in the info box. And I do also encourage introducing children books that talk about black history that they can also read. We need to raise our kids not to hate.
If you're in the UK, write to your local MPs to include black history in the national curriculum. I don't ever remember learning about black history. You can also write to the Mayor of London for justice of victims. I have found templates that have been created by people, which I'll link in the info box. The work has literally been done for you. You just need to leave your name and the borough that you come from and send it off. In America, you can vote for your mayors, your district attorneys, your attorney generals, your state senators, your representatives but i've also learned it's not enough to just say vote you really need to look into what do they really stand for how do they communicate to the people what have they done in the past to help the community be specific in your workplace contact the networks that were put in place to enforce inclusivity and diversity and ask them what initiatives are being put in place to spark conversations about the issues that are well present to this day. And if you don't have such a network present in your workplace, create one. As part of the beauty community myself, I also urge you guys to support the hashtag pull up or shut up movement. This hashtag was created by Sharon Tutor, leader of Oma Beauty and was also shared by Jackie Aina. This hashtag demands brands to state how many black people they have within their workforce and how many black people they have in leadership roles. Now I've seen that a lot of brands have actually pulled up and I've been very transparent and are looking at ways to make a positive change and include more black people in within their workforce. Hashtag like these are really making a change and I urge you guys to not only now but in the longer term ask these brands to show what they've been doing to improve diversity within their workforce. I've made it imperative for myself to always read and educate myself on these situations and to know what's going on around me. I want to make it a goal of mine to continuously share resources through this platform, share information on ways you can help. It's not enough to just not be racist, we need to be anti-racist. Start these conversations within your homes and I will leave this list that I've written out in the info box on ways you can help this movement and take a step forward to making an impactful change. We need change. The racism against black people has gone for way too long. And I also want to quickly mention that I've been really, really disappointed in the response of Bollywood. The actresses and actors have mentioned what? I've been, I used to look up to these people, but I'm like, why? They don't care about talking about what matters. I've learned that these people only care about being neutral. They have a huge platform and are not talking about the issues that are going on till today. Not only are they not talking about the issues that are going on in their own country, but don't even have the common decency to properly share resources and talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. Why do we look up to these people? And it's a shame because they have such a huge influence in the South Asian community. They have the power to change the mindset of so many out there, but they're not. At least take accountability for all your involvement in skin lightening issues in the South Asian community. I also really recommend Hassan Minaj videos, the Patriot Act on YouTube. The videos are so educational, so resourceful and so eye-opening. He explains things in ways that are so easy to understand and I will link his channel in the info box. So whether it's police violence, poor medical care or simply not just being able to breathe, the black community suffers from systematic racial injustice. And like Hassan Minaj says, we need to take these acts to make a change so that the next time a white policeman is kneeled on a black man's neck, he will see it for what it is, murder.